Tonight on News 46, a budget agreement is reached and the government is open for business. Southbound lanes of Highway 160 were closed for Mercy Air to Land. And the Pahrumps Youth Softball Association holds a press conference. News 46 starts now. News 46 is brought to you by... The Pahrump Nugget Hotel and Casino. Located at the intersection of Route 372 and Highway 160, you can call the Pahrump Nugget at 775-751-6500 or you can visit their website at www.pahrumpnugget.com and by affiliated chiropractic and affiliated physical therapy. Come in for your free consultation. Call 775-727-8900. Our goal is to create the individual treatment plan that will restore your health and end pain. You're watching KPVM News 46 at 5 with Rick Vale and Rhonda Van Winkle. News 46, local coverage you can count on. Good evening, it's Monday, April 11th, 2011. I'm Rick Vale. And I'm Kelsey Roberts for News 46. Topping our news this evening, lawmakers agreed two hours before the deadline Friday night to a tentative budget agreement which halted the closure of the federal government. Congressional leaders and President Obama headed off a shutdown of the government with less than two hours to spare Friday night under a new tentative budget deal that would cut $38 billion from federal spending this year. After days of tense negotiations and partisan quarreling, House Republicans came to preliminary terms with the White House and Senate Democrats over financing the government for the next six months resolving an impasse that had threatened to disrupt federal operations across the country and around the globe. Both Democrats and Republicans proclaimed they had reached a deal and would begin the necessary steps to pass the bill and send it to President Obama this week. Speaking from the White House, President Obama said both sides gave ground in reaching the bargain and that some of the cuts accepted by Democrats will be painful because of the need to put the compromise into legislative form, congressional leaders said the House and Senate would vote overnight to pass a stopgap measure financing the government through Thursday to prevent any break in the flow of federal dollars. The actual budget compromise would be considered sometime this week. I'm Deanna O'Donnell for News 46. And southbound Highway 160 was closed as Mercy Air landed on the scene for a high-impact single-vehicle rollover Saturday morning. We spoke to NHP trooper Pat Walker. Uh, basically, what we know, we're still in the preliminary part of the investigation. We are looking at a couple of different things. Right now, we just got basically a failure to uh, maintain lane. The Y part is what we're still looking at. Uh, single occupant, uh, lone vehicle involved, uh, went off the road, got launched airborne, came back down in this ravine behind us, and started cartwheeling. And, uh, Ended up on its side. They had to do extrication, and the driver was the sole occupant, and he was being life flighted by Mercy Air into UMC. There's some pretty big ditches he went across, huh? He flew, did some flying. Yes, he did. You yourself can calculate speed. Well, we can. We can do it. We haven't worked it up yet. Uh, he was at least the speed limit, just on a basic guess from experience, but we'll work it up here in a little bit. Uh, we just finished up getting him loaded up and gone, so we're, we're going to be working on it. So this may be an overcorrection on the lanes? Maybe. We have some witnesses that, that did uh, observe uh, the vehicle go off the road prior to the accident scene. We're looking at that. We're also looking in case there's any type of intoxication. Initially, we don't have any, but uh, you don't know if there's medications involved or, uh, you know, who knows? It could be diabetic. We don't know yet. I know that we had both lanes closed for Mercy Air to land on scene here. Yes, we had to shut it down because of the helicopter coming in. We did have one a single lane for a little while, and now we have it back open, uh, the left lane, and just hope everybody is careful and gets through here, and we should have it wrapped up here before long. We have Clark County and Front Valley Fire and Rescue here. Yes, we had both uh, units uh, come out here. Uh, I guess it was close enough for Clark County to, to respond, and they did, and uh, they worked very well together from what I've seen, and uh, they got him extricated, and 
secured the scene. As, as you've seen already, they had the uh, car pretty well secured so it wouldn't roll back over on anybody, and uh, we got him out okay. The car being up on its side like it would ha has the possibility of rolling over still. That's why they used the braces and, and the uh, different block and tackle that they had. They had it secured both front and rear so it wouldn't roll, and then, of course, they had the cactus on the other side. And they're transporting UMC Trauma Center? That's what I was told. Fire Chief Scott Lewis also spoke to News 46 on scene. Yes, we are actually in Clark County, approximately one and a half miles south of Tacopa Road. And as you can see, we've had a vehicle leave the roadway today. It rolled several times. It left the uh, occupant, the driver, in a precarious situation as the vehicle was, came upon it resting on its driver's side, facing in the opposite direction. Uh, a lot of damage to the vehicle. It resting against a Joshua tree added to the extrication of this individual today. As you can see, we had to use a series of specialized jacks to support the vehicle and stabilize it so that we could get the paramedic inside the vehicle for patient stabilization while the extrication process was underway. Everything was done successfully today. It was a great cooperative effort between Front Valley Fire Rescue and Clark County Fire. Uh, engine 66 out of the city and then 79 out of the local station on top of the hill were here today. And we did, in fact, fly the patient out of Mercy Air as a precautionary measure based on mechanism. Uh, so all things considered, everything went really well here today. It took a little time given the, the uh, constraints of the extrication itself. The person was medically entrapped or, or mechanically entrapped? Mechanically. There, there was no way for that patient to get out on their own due to the damage to the vehicle and its precarious situation. And uh, what, else, what other equipment did we use to get him out? We used a series of specialized rescue jacks as well as hydraulic tools to extricate the patient today and some good old-fashioned uh, manpower with some uh, hand tools just to get access points and such. So there's a combination of a lot of different resources and tools used here today. All right, folks, coming up, the Youth Softball Association holds a press conference. And Mother Nature wreaks havoc on the resident's home. Keep it here. News 46 is brought to you by... The Pahrump Nugget Hotel and Casino. Located at the intersection of Route 372 and Highway 160, you can call the Pahrump Nugget at 775-751-6500 or you can visit their website at www.pahrumpnugget.com. And by affiliated chiropractic and affiliated physical therapy. Come in for your free consultation. Call 775-727-8900. Our goal is to create the individual treatment plan that will restore your health and end pain. Welcome back to News 46. Prump Valley High School is gearing up for graduation. They've purchased chairs for the event to be used for years to come. Your help is needed to support our local school by sponsoring a chair for the high school. Principal Max Buffy explains. Uh, graduation, we're planning, trying to get everything done, but uh, one of the things we decided to do this year was uh, purchase some chairs that will be used for graduation so we don't have to go all around the district and um, uh, try to beg, borrow, and steal whatever chairs we can to have enough to set up on the field. Uh, without having a, uh, a convention center in town that we can do it inside, we have to provide the seating for the parents. So we decided to buy 1,300 chairs. We are selling sponsorships uh, for those chairs of $10 a chair. So if you're a business or an individual, uh, you can buy a sponsorship. Uh, people will be able to see it. And uh, it doesn't mean that's the chair you get a set in at graduation because this is where uh, these are the chairs where the parents will sit on the field. So what we're trying to do by selling the sponsorships is help pay for the cost of the chairs. And these chairs will be chairs that will be used for many years to come. Yes, we plan on storing them every year. Uh, they're all going to be the same color instead of a, a, a mismatch of uh, different colors. And we're planning on using them only for special events and graduation. And the sponsorship, you get a sticker actually on the chair. Yes, the sponsorship, what we'll do is we will have a decal printed off the name of your business or why you're buying the chair. And then uh, we will put that decal on the back of the chair so that people will see that. This is really helpful for the graduation for Prompt Valley High School. So how can people uh, sponsor a chair? And they're $10 each. You can buy as many as you want. That's correct. And to sponsor a chair, all you need to do is contact uh, Sherry Allison in our athletic department. She will take how many chairs you want to sponsor. 
Uh, right at this time, we've got about uh, 100 businesses and individuals that have purchased chairs. So um, if you want to do this, it's something you might want to move on fast. All right. And um, what's the phone number? Uh, just call the school here, 727-7737. Uh, you'll get the tree or a student will answer your call and they'll be able to transfer you to the athletic department. And KPVM will be videotaping the graduation ceremony, and you can pre-order your copy for $25 by calling 727-9400, extension 209. After Friday's arrest, the Pahrump Youth Softball Association president, 39-year-old Joe Roderick, on 126 counts of embezzlement, a press conference was held yesterday by the acting president, Alice White, at the Ian Deutsch Memorial Park. News 46 had the opportunity to speak to Ms. White following the press conference. The Pahrump Valley Youth Softball Association is a family and as a family, we are coming together to work through a very trying time in our organization. Our priority is to continue this season with as little disruption as possible for our coaches and families, but especially our players. As a board, we are united in working diligently to regroup and refocus our efforts on the future success and stability of our league. Upon discovering the extent of some monetary discrepancies, our board immediately took appropriate actions and notified the authorities. We respectfully ask for everyone's patience as we proceed with this investigation, and we also ask for everyone's respect and prayers for the rest of the Roderick family. At this time, the PYSA is cooperating fully with the Nye County Sheriff's Office and the Nye County DA's Office in this investigation. If anyone has any questions, please contact the Nye County District Attorney's Office. And my name is Alice White. I am acting president of the PYSA, and this is my board. Thank you. Well, if you live in Pahrump, then you know what a dust devil is. Think about a large dust devil mixing with the high winds that we've been experiencing here lately, and you can feel Mother Nature's force, and you can see and hear it as well. Just ask Shane Francis, who not only felt and heard his awning lift up and smack into the roof of his house. He had been asking the landlord unsuccessfully to fix it by anchoring it to the ground prior to the incident on Friday. Well, the wind started at the neighbor's yard again in a tunnel and it came through and picked it up and flipped it over. And it's sitting right now on top of your roof. How strong were the winds? Real strong? You could feel them against your house? Yeah. Did it cause any other damage when it picked it up? No. So right now it's sitting on top of your roof. What's going to happen? Well, they are gonna got a guy coming out tomorrow morning to look at it and then they're going to take it down. I can see that you yourself are in a wheelchair so there's really nothing that you can do at this point. Right. Tell me a little bit about uh, what it felt like to have your whole entire side of your house, you know, ripping up off. Well, actually, I was asleep, and then when it came up and hit the roof, the whole of the house shake, shook. Woke oh, wow. me up. So the managers here are going to have this repaired? Oh, yeah. So it's been a little bit toastier in here than usual. Absolutely. And, and I'm thinking that might have something to do with all these warmer temperatures we've been having. We've got lots of warm temperatures, 80 degree temperatures, almost 90 degree temperatures coming up for you in our seven day forecast. Don't go anywhere. We'll have that for you right after this break. News 46 weather is brought to you by your local dairy farmers. Dairy products are very important in maintaining a healthy body. For more information, you can visit their website at NevadaDairyCouncil.org. Hey everyone, welcome back to News 46. I'm Rick Vale with your weather. We had a partly cloudy day out there, a high of 73 degrees. Now the winds were coming out of the south-southwest at up to 11 miles per hour, so it was a pretty nice day as far as winds go. Pressure was holding steady on the barometer, 30.20. Sunrise was at 6.16 a.m. and a record high was 93 degrees back in 1989. Now looking at tonight, it's going to be partly cloudy again as well, a low of 46 degrees. Winds out of the north-northeast at about 8 miles per hour. Now sunset will be at 7.14 p.m. and your record low was 31 degrees back in 1963. Now moving on to our seven day forecast tomorrow, not so bad. The winds are actually going to die down for us just a little bit. We're probably going to have around 11 mile per hour winds with a high of 78 and a low of 47. Wednesday, partly cloudy skies roll back in. And in fact, if you can take a look, you're going to have partly cloudy skies all week long. We're not expecting the cloud cover to go anywhere. And sadly, we're not expecting that wind to go anywhere either. Wednesday gusts up to 30 miles per hour, high of 77, a low of 41. Thursday, we're looking at windy yet again, but not so bad, about 15 to 19 mile per hour winds with a high of 74 and a low of 41. Friday, 20 mile per hour gusts expected, a high of 81 and 49 degrees for our overnight low. 
Saturday's looking great for the weekend. If you want to get out and have a good time, gusts are only going to be up to about 20 miles per hour, which is pretty good, all things considered. A high of 84 and a low of 51 makes for a great day if you're looking to go to Lake Mead or anything like that. Sunday, up to 24 mile per hour gusts expected with a high of 83 and a low of 51. And looking at the end of the seven day forecast, Monday with a high of 89, a low of 57, and gusts up to about 23 miles per hour. So now, did you have a great weekend, Kelsey? I did. I did not have a great weekend. Oh. And I'm going to tell you why, and I'm going to tell all of you at home why. My credit card got skimmed. <laughs> I'm not really sure where, but that's the third person here in Pahrump that I know of who's had their credit card skimmed. Have you ever had your credit card skimmed before? It's happened to a family member of mine. Okay. It was enough. a terrible experience. Yes, but. they uh, skimmed my credit card and they tried to buy $1,000 worth of product in Istanbul, Turkey. Now, luckily, my local bank found it and it got to my attention before I lost everything in my bank account. Not that there was $1,000 in there, trust me. But things you may want to look out for when you're out shopping is for credit card skimming machines. The devices are very hard to spot. I certainly didn't spot it. And my card got skimmed anyway. But you're going to want to pay very close attention to the machines you're putting your credit card into as they can very easily be covered up with a cr another machine. The way it works is, is they buy a broken down machine and then they remanufacture it and stick it over the face of the original device. So you go to scan your card, you have no idea you're sticking it into something that's going to capture all your information on that little magnetic strip. And then it turns out you can just take that information, email it somewhere like, I don't know, Istanbul, Turkey, and they can print it on a fake credit card and start charging you up. Oh, see, I did not know that. Yes, and if you do get your credit card scammed, you want to make sure you talk to your bank right away, and you also want to make sure you file a police report. It's very important that you have that information, and you don't want to get everything in your bank account sucked away. Well, Rick, it's great that your bank was on top of it. Well, they were, actually. I only lost 30 bucks, but I'm getting it back. It's going to be okay. But <laughs> Really, Istanbul, Turkey. They're like, are you in Istanbul, Turkey? No, I'm in Pahrump. That's mm -hmm. where I live. Okay, so, yay. Now, we've also got some announcements for you, plenty of announcements. Earth Day 2011, coming up April 23rd, Saturday, we're going to have a big old festival over at Eden Deutsch Memorial Park from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. There's going to be education, information, instruction on recycling, hazardous materials, town cleanup, and volunteering in the community. And don't forget the food, live music, That's fun. That's right, food, everything. live music. Here I am thinking about all the important, knowledgeable stuff. And hey, you have to have a good right. time while celebrating Earth, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> also, the 11th annual... Pahrump Town Cleanup's coming into town. That's going to be Saturday, May 7th, so you got some time to prepare for that. It's going to be at the Calvada Eye at the Duck Pond from 7 a.m. till noon. Now, if you want to get in touch with anybody about that, you can call 727-5800. Again, that's May 7th, so you do have some time on that. <laughs> so let's see what else. Now, this is brand new. We have clogging classes beginning tonight at the 4-H building on Calvada from 4 to 7 p.m. For more information, call Pam Gatling at 727-5532. And tonight, the Nevada Rural Democratic Caucus Teleconference is being held from 6.30 to 8.30. And uh, to call, you can call to be part of the teleconference. Call 712-775-7200. And then you enter this code in to join the teleconference. The code is 467-460. Again, the number is 712-775-7200. And you enter the code 76 Seven, sorry, four six seven four six zero. One more time. <laughs> four six seven. Four six zero. And folks, I think it's going to do it for this edition of News Forty Six. I'm Rick Vale, and I'm Kelsey Roberts. From everyone up here on the Hill KPM, we wish you a safe evening, and we'll see you here again tomorrow night. Till then, good night, Prump.